All right. So we should be live right now. Is it on? It's on. All right. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. It let's see. Say that. Yeah. You showing up yet? I think so. Let's see. Yeah, it's live now. I see there it you now. Go. Oh, yeah. see it now. All, All right. right. We are live. I'm, I'm going to share it. You say hello to everybody. Sam's doing the sharing. Share. I'm saying hello. Welcome back to some Get Some Fire Live Monday Night Show. This is episode number 20. And we have Stacy Rasky back on. She was one of our early guests. Um, you were three or four or something like that episode. Um, and that was right before your last event, which uh, I went to down in Tampa, which was amazing. And we have your you. follow-up event to that coming up in less than two weeks now, which um, yeah. which is awesome. Um, it's definitely... Uh, Definitely, if you didn't get your ticket, you're missing out. But we do have a surprise for you because we convinced Stacy to let our viewers in on some more tickets that are locked out, sold out right now. So pay attention to the show tonight, and at the end of the show, you'll figure out how you can go to the event in less than two weeks in Tampa, where it's warm and we don't have ice storms like we did in Texas last week for <laughs> Apex Live. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, that was uh, something. I thought when I started going to Texas, it was going to be warm. Yeah, we had a good time. Listen, it was like a hurricane party, right? And we had no place to go, so we make the best It was kind of like that, yeah. Right? It was like we all stuck there. Everyone's plane was getting canceled, and uh, we all had a good time just chilling out and talking. Yeah, we just hung out. Hung out at the hotel. We didn't go anywhere. We crashed the, uh, my my crew crashed the executive uh, lunch, and... Got to hang out, and then we just hung out in the lobby and roundtabled it. I mean, there were so many people around. You know, that's the best part of the Apex experience is the roundtables, just sitting down and just talking and ideas and sharing. We uh, we have all these Facebook friends, right, that, that we've connected with in groups, and then you almost don't even realize, like, you're a real person. <laughs> you know, it's like, <laughs> it's pretty funny. It's like a couple people I met, I'm like, wait, who are you again? I'm like, oh, yeah, I know you. We've talked, you know. But I know everyone has so the same experience. Guess, Brian? So anyway, on? so rambling. Um, so... <laughs> <laughs> so we got the one that's what Brian our, does. yeah we ramble that's what we do that's why Sam's here the real man but um we got Stacy back on tonight um Stacy is um uh the founder of Influential um uh, which um is a TM TM trademarked TM. Yeah. Trademarks, Hello, yeah. Influential, yeah. Trademark. I got I got a little drop drop <laughs> in Wiley's book <laughs> <laughs> that's it that's it and we'll get the shout out so um so Stacy's uh program is is really amazing um jump on our website um i think i threw it in the comments i will throw it in the comments stacy um all about her stacy has her own app for uh for your phone too if you jump in uh the app store you can get her app and get links to all her influential. stuff influential influential uh the influential app um there's a lot to her uh she's got a military background uh we thank her for her service that's kick ass and um yeah, I, I still say it every time. I don't know how you guys do it to leave everything behind and go fight for your country. God bless. God bless everyone out there that does that. So, and then uh, I think last time uh, we talked about um, what it was like to shoot uh, certain guns and what that did. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes. Go search yes. our last interview. Yes, that, that was has our... piqued your interest. Yes, I'm gonna turn this. Funny. I'm gonna turn this video up again. <laughs> Sam started to flush again already. We didn't even get started, so uh, yes. we, <laughs> I'm easy to make we blush. Made, we made Sam blush. <laughs> yeah, we made Sam blush last time. So let's see if we can make that happen again. <laughs> well, considering so, the pre the pre game conversation. Yeah, the pre game conversation. Sam's already ready. Look how ready he is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, thanks. So it's if you're not having background. fun, right? If you're not having fun, what's the point? That's it. We keep it real, and you know what? You know, we all think it, but no one talks about it. So. Let's talk about it. <laughs> so, Stacy, um, you got your event coming up uh, less than two weeks. Um, I know you got a bunch of amazing speakers. Uh, tell us what what the event's about and what the, what the purpose is, and and basically how you came up with it and the whole history behind it, and lead us into. Uh, oh yeah. Yeah, you know, there's a lot to it, obviously, but um, someone messaged me and goes, "That show looks really nice. What's this all about?" And I said, "What's it all about? Tune in. You're gonna find. You'll learn a lot tonight." And I said, "I sent them to your website. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of moving parts to you, so it's pretty awesome." Oh, thanks. <laughs> I, I promise I am far less complex than you make it sound. <laughs> Pretty simple. Unless you ask my husband, he's like, oh man. He's like, you are the simplest. No, he said, you are the most complicated, simple person I know. And I'm like, you're the simplest, most complicated person I know. <laughs> well, you're totally down to earth. You're complicating me. Great stuff. Hey, right? 
TV you got to give a shout out to uh, hey Brian. You got to give a shout out to Greg and to Nicole that are watching tonight, man. Uh, Tell them what's up. Oh, I see. see them in the comments. Can you? Oh, see there the it is. Okay, yeah, I see the comments now. Here hey. we go. Yeah, yeah, we're here. They comment and they get a shout out. So yep, Jen yep. And Gabriel. Gabe is on. Greg is on. Nicole is see. on. Nicole's showing us some love. That's Look at it. that. That's it. That's Isn't the crew. That's the crew. Greg Don't didn't her. make it down. We hung out. So uh, Gabe, uh, we hung out in. Uh, He's from actually Staten Island. I was in Jersey. He was a New Yorker, and we met in Texas, like me and Greg did, who's also a New Yorker. And we actually had lunch today, and that's the network, and that happens, right? So uh, we met in Texas, came back here, and had lunch today. So and the network's starting to begin. So it was kind of kind of cool, right? We're building the relationships. But uh, and Nicole hung out with us down there in a snow party. So it was good times. But anyway, I love it. Well, just uh, uh, like two weeks ago, uh, a lot of us Florida Apex peeps. Got oh to, yeah, I saw that. Yeah, got you got a good crowd down there. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. It was amazing. Yeah, it's just so fun to meet up. We got a dinner coming up. Uh, I think next Wednesday up here in New York. So any New York Apex people watching, uh, that's coming together. Make sure you're in the New York group if uh, you're not already. If you're an Apex and you're not, reach out to me. We'll get you in the New York dinner group. We call it. So and I think that's going on in a lot of states now. I think everyone's kind of catching on. We started yeah. it about you know, when I first started Apex. We said, hey, there's a bunch of us from New York here. Let's Let's add value here close to home, you know, let's network a little bit more. And um, we've actually brought some people into Apex from being in the group, which is kind of neat. You know, um, they come and join our dinner group. Uh, Dawn, who's actually on my team, is part of the dinner group, and she had so much fun around us. She said, I want to be part of this and uh, come into the circle. And then I want to try and get her into the uh, influential circle next, but she just had some uh, emergency surgery and she's a little beat up. So, oh, yeah, so say a prayer for Dawn. She's, uh, yeah, as Gabe. Yep, yep. Stacy is so interesting. I'm Greg. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Greg. Greg's my uh, my it. my twin brother. Uh, I don't know if anyone's seen the pictures of the two of us together, but your brother from another my mother. brother from another mother. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, but uh, back on topic. Um, so Stacy has a book. Um, uh, nice what's the name of it again? Um, Be a boss and fire that. Fire that bitch. bitch. Yeah, I remember the bitch part of it. I forgot the beginning part. Everybody does. <laughs> And you uh, had a TV show, right? And um, TV show is coming out in April. That, that's mm -hmm. pretty cool. Yeah, um, I have to watch that. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then uh, what else you got going on? Obviously, you got your coaching. You got your uh, your events. Um, you got yeah, your podcast. We got some courses. Yeah. We got the podcast. We got the influential app. We've got. Right. I'm I'm doing corporate leadership training now. Awesome. I'm doing some awesome. amazing partnerships. And I got a question for you. Yeah. Shoot. What was your favorite subject in high school? Oh, what was my favorite subject in high school? So I am the quintessential creative scientist. So it was a balance of I loved my sciences, especially biology, um, genetics, any of that stuff. I remember in science class. Our guy had um, like little animals, little dead animals in formaldehyde on all the shelves in high school. Did y'all have that? Yes. Um, our one <laughs> science teacher had an irradiated pig, just like the guy from like, CSI. Why would you have pig. that? Just because it's an interesting conversation piece and it freaks out the kids. <laughs> it freaked us out. I, well, I think and it then, made us and then attention. there was like a 20 foot albino python too that was alive. Huh. Did they let you feed it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, did you have any snakes at school, Ryan? Uh, encounter any snakes? No, my thing was um, actually rabbits. Believe it or not. So in sixth grade or whatever, we had a science teacher that had rabbits in the back of the room, and no um, so I used to go basically my my job. And this this day, the teachers probably get fired over it. I basically hung out with the rabbits all day. I go in the back of the room. I change their cages every day. I give them stuff to play. with. she's teaching the class, and I was always good in sinus science and i think we're all kind of the same mindset i i wasn't you know adhd I, I couldn't sit down and take notes and stuff so basically i just took it in my head and i kind of kept it so i'm in the back of the room playing with the rabbits that's my whole science career for science school year for sixth grade i was basically the rabbit guy going back to play with the rabbits yeah, in, like when in elementary school for sure it was a it was it was a prestigious thing to be able to clean out the gerbils cage. Yeah, you know? like that was only certain and, people and were allowed to do that. The other kids pet, had to sit yeah. there and, and work, and yeah, I got, got to wander around the classroom. The I yeah. remember that. Yeah. Fucking hell. 
We used to actually go help the custodians in uh, in grammar school. Like if they had to set up chairs for oh, like a, a, for an event or something, me and a couple of my friends would go and we'd go help the custodians. We'd disappear for the day, like the custodians helpers, like anything not mm-hmm. to not to be in class, you know. And we were always in like honors classes or you know you know celebrated classes and. You know, all of us, and you can, looking back, we were all ADD, and none of us could sit still. So, and we all kind of were smart and took it in without really having to learn it. So, we do anything with our power to get out of the classroom. Dude, I skipped, I skipped class so much. Yeah. I don't know if I should say this if my parents are watching. I'm probably yeah. still get in trouble. I'm still scared of my mom. <laughs> <laughs> the best was one this. day I was skipping school, and we went into t- we went so. For those of you who don't know, I went to high school in North Pole, Alaska. <laughs> this is a <laughs> suburb of Fairbanks. Yes, the Santa Claus house is in North Pole. It is a thing. Wow. Um, even even like the police department badge, like their patch, the, the department patch has the little like Christmas in North Pole. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, <laughs> Um, like so that. we went into Fairbanks for the day and we're going into Fred Meyer to go shopping and thank God we walked, we parked where we did. Cause as we're walking in through the parking lot, we passed my mom's car. I'm like, Oh, guess we're not going <laughs> in there. <laughs> not to see here. <laughs> she was shopping. So like, didn't see her manage to circumvent that small crisis for the day. But the best, the absolute best, since we're talking about high school stuff, was the day that I got caught um, forging the note. Uh-huh. So mm. I could perfectly you forget forge. to fold it in half. You forget to fold so it in I, half. I perfectly forged my mother's signature and notes all the time. Like I could totally copy her handwriting. And what was hilarious is, is when I got caught, they brought me into the office and they hold out the note that I most recently wrote. And what was really funny is they were comparing it to the previous notes that were also written by me. Like, <laughs> you guys are awesome. <laughs> totally got caught. Yes. Yeah. But <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is funny. That's funny. Man, I played drums more than anything in high school. I would, I would fib to my teachers and skip class to go, tell them I had a drum lesson and I'd go to the practice rooms and just play drums. And they never checked. So I did play a lot of drums. Um, I went to but, uh, Catholic high school and um, I didn't really skip class because they were pretty keen on that. But um, in school, I'd sort of skip class. So I was friendly with the, the priests and everyone there and they would do um, kind of like, almost like a counseling session type thing. We'd go and hang out with the priest or whatever and, you know, we just so yes yeah, so and whatever. So you that, hung out with the priests at a Catholic school and they'd let you skip class and exchange. Yeah, yeah, not like that. Not like that. <laughs> not my missing out. Not like that. So a couple of us. So if we came into school late, we'd go right into uh, Father Tom's office. And same thing, we'd feed the fish. They had a koi pond, so we'd go feed the koi and all this other stuff. And be like, all right, you know, Father, if we get a pass the class, you know, like we're late. And he'd be like, oh, he was with me feeding the fish. Boom. And then, like, every time we were late, we'd go feed the fish, see Father Tom, and we'd get a pass into class. So we wouldn't get detention for being late. <laughs> we had the system worked out. We used to collect attendance. They used to like make the attendance and stick it in a little thing on the door. So they we'd leave. Oh, the I remember and, those. Yeah. So they so, call it. Uh, they call it the register. Yeah. So we go around and collect them from every classroom through the school. So yeah, you had to take a, and yeah, the lead kid from a, a, yeah, yeah. You'd so, go and pick them all up and carry them up front. Yeah, so uh, we, we that was another way too, to get man. out of class. So me and uh, yes. one of one of my friends or whatever like that would wander around the school for the whole period collecting attendance and making faces at people in class and doing all kinds of stuff. We used to do belly slides. We'd run down the hallway and literally dive and slide on our belly across the doorway. So everyone's sitting in the classroom, and all of a sudden you'd see me slide by on my belly across the doorway, and everyone start giggling, and teachers would be like, then you duck around the corner, but what the hell was that? It was, you know, stupid stuff we used to do. <laughs> see, that's the thing I think that is so fantastic is how many people within our respective networks are like this right yeah, like we're, we're really man. at the core like we're these really 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 good-hearted people and obviously we were really good-hearted kids you know very yeah, kind and very yeah. thoughtful yeah. but at the same time we had a very strong inner rebel and mm-hmm. balancing right the you know as a, I'm, I'm always talking about that influential alpha energy right the high sensitivity and the high sensation seeking so that's why we often have those you know, high level of activity with the high sensation seeking. So we have those symptoms of ADD, ADHD, right? We're just have this high level of drive. Mm -hmm. And then that really high level of empathy too. 
sometimes we can be really extreme on those opposite ends of the spectrum. Yeah, I think I think the highs right? and lows in our lives, right? There's you know, the highs and lows, really high and really low. Yeah, yeah. The left brain, right brain, yeah. right? Why a lot of us are really great at math and science, but also really creative. Yeah. Why you know, or musically talented, or you know, whatever yeah. the case may be. Yeah. Um, why we struggle oftentimes to fit in in our lives socially Definitely. because you know kind of always the misfit there was enough of that rebel energy that we weren't always necessarily buying into the facade yet because of the sensitivity we often wore a mask of who we should be mm. that's a good one no, that's true. That's true. We, I mean, I was always in honors classes. I was a nerdy kid, yeah, you know. Super smart, right. but I never applied myself. No, yeah, I was smart you would without do trying. Shit. Yeah, I to have fun. Exactly. <laughs> I, I mean, I didn't. I didn't even try. No, I didn't either. I mean, literally no. cruise cruise through school. I mean, I cruised through engineering yeah. school. I mean, I went to literally a great engineering school. I got like a C, and I did nothing. Cutting class, and I was commuting to New Jersey from New York, so it was an hour and probably half each way. So the minute I could sneak out the back door to cut, we'd sign in and psh, gone. And I got. Say, what, what's that? What, what do you call a What do you call a medical school graduate that got C's? What? Doctor. <laughs> a med school doctor. graduate, a doctor. doctor. Yeah. doctor. Uh, you know, it was <laughs> D for done. I was I was I was better than D, so D for done. You know, but um, but I can't. I had no yeah, attention. Still calling doctor. Yeah. No attention. One of my one of my most vivid high school memories, though, right, is seeing our peer group bully get the absolute shit kicked out of him by one of my friend's older brothers. <laughs> it was the most amazing thing. Um, you know, did you ever have a bully, Brian? Like one guy that maybe two or three grades so, older than you that terrorized all the younger kids? It, it, like, so I took used their to, lunch and shit. It's because I was his. A six foot tall, skinny, nerdy kid. I used to always get picked on, and they used to like, you know, tease me and like, you know, you know, sucker punch me and see what I would do type thing. I used to get, I used to get tested all the time, and um, really started back in, I think fourth grade, was the first time I got involved in a fight. Um, Damn, you was six foot in fourth grade. Yeah, I wasn't six foot, but I was, I was up there, and if, no. there was a bully, bang, you know, smacking around a friend of mine, and I got in the middle of it. And then he started hitting me and I, you know, took him out. And of course I got suspended for it. And my dad heard the story and he says, <laughs> he says, don't let me ever hear that you started a fight, but if someone starts a fight with you, you better finish it. And then I, you know, and that was kind of what the words to live by. So after that I was like game on, someone wants to sucker punch me, he's going down, you know? So, um, I fought a lot. I mean, through, through school, because like I said, I used to get picked on and they'd come up and they'd hit me and like, what are you going to do about it? And I'll well, watch this. I'm going to smash your head in the locker, you know? So a couple of those went on. I got I get bullied a lot. I did too. Yeah. You ever smash yeah. anyone's head in a locker, Stacey? Come on, um, I know you have at least one time. I Come on. did push someone <laughs> over. <laughs> but did you flush someone in the urinal? Because I did that. No. Oh, I've never done that. Yeah, so uh, no. coming out of lunch, uh, there was this bully in high school. And uh, we're sitting at the lunch table and he crunches up a bunch of pretzels. And as he's walking out, he just dumps them on my head. And I'm like... <laughs> Like, are you for real right sorry. now? So, I'm sorry. So, like, so like, I was just like, are you for real? Right? So, <laughs> so he walks out, and he thinks he's a tough guy, right? So, everyone sees me, and they see me on fire, but I'm, I'm keeping my cool, right? And I just follow him out, and he, he goes into the bathroom. And so, of course, I follow him at the bathroom. All my guys hold the door closed, right? And I go, what, you know, what's your problem? This and that. And um, I took a swing, whatever happened, and somehow I wound up smashing his face into the urinal. To the point where his nose was bleeding so bad, his mom had to come pick him up because his nose wouldn't stop bleeding. And he never bothered me again. So, nice. You finished it. Yeah. But it was like, you know, like, you, you know, I would put up with a lot. But then when I snap, it's it's over. You know, I, I and it's to the to life this day. It, you know, I, I, you know, it doesn't take a lot. To, you know, I don't get excited by a lot. But if I hit my breaking point, it's on like Donkey Kong, you know. And I think a lot of people are like that, you know. But um, I let a lot of stuff roll off, you know, a lot of, but... Certain times, it just you're over the edge. Well, it in the, it definitely shifts how we manage that space. The stronger and clearer we are with our boundaries, because you know that there really is such an energy to that. I think about when I got bullied all the time. There was an energy to being targeted. I attracted a lot of that negative attention because. 
I had that energy that was like literally pick on me. Yeah. I had no boundaries, right? So it's just like the people who are the people pleasers attract the narcissists, right? Like yeah, it's yeah, just yeah, that's true. what yeah, it is. There, yeah, there yeah. is this energy that we project and, you know, and it's kind of, you know, for lack of a better term, a bit of that victim energy. It is the the energy of those of us who were lacking some confidence and some esteem and because of that you know would kind of adjust a bit to people please to get people to like us you know that was my story it was like so much of needing that external validation and that approval because i had no confidence and no esteem whatsoever Right. So you're trying no to... self-love no self-respect yeah. no boundaries at yeah. all you know because i came from so much trauma I didn't know really what genuine love um, and connection was, not because my parents were bad people, but they were emotionally unavailable and just working with the toolkit they had, right? You know, the generational patterns. And because of that, I, I got picked on so, so badly. Good. And I just wanted people to like me, right? And I was too nice and too giving and um you know bit me in the ass and literally from 2015 to now that's been my journey of learning what boundaries really are because most people are not teaching them correctly and being able to take that power back in a way where I don't have to tell people my boundaries anymore it's just an energy that I project it's just who I'm being and it just alleviates that stuff. You know, we don't have to be in those situations where we tell people, no, you're not going to treat me that way. Yeah. If we do that inner work and shift how we're showing up, the energy that we project eliminates that shit altogether. Yeah, no doubt. Eliminates I mean, those relationships. Yeah, I think yeah, at a certain point, we realize that you just own, own who you are and don't, you know, you are who you are. And if you have the confidence yeah. in yourself, you know, I actually... Uh, Robert uh, Nelson uh, interviewed uh, me and Christine, actually, who was in on here, who said hello also, um, for the uh, part of the uh, the youth uh, entrepreneur uh, group that they're putting together. And uh, mm -hmm. one of the things I mentioned was, you know, basically, you know, don't, you know, don't try and be like the crowd, you know, have confidence in yourself. And the quicker you learn that and the quicker you learn that to be a strong person and get people to follow you to become the leader. If you're the leader, then everyone follows you around. But if you're the follower, then you wind up getting in trouble. You wind up following the kids doing the bad things. You wind up because you're trying to fit in, right? So maybe you don't want to go smoke pot after school, but that's what the cool kids are doing. So that's what you go do, right? But if you're strong. Well, it is cool. I mean, why wouldn't you? <laughs> Never smoke pot right. in my life. Oh, wait. If, if, if there's kids watching this, do not smoke that after school. 45 years on earth, I've never smoked pot, believe it or not. How crazy is that? It's all right. We're working on it. Yeah. But still anyway, drinks. that's a fun fact. Yeah, drinks. I just drink too much. Yeah, but still but, drinks. Yeah, you know. But um, yeah, I think until you figure that, uh, figure out how to you know stand in your own skin and 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 own it, it's uh, you know, I think that's the it's, key to life. I mean, it's that's painful, that's though. yeah. I mean, that's literally it's, why I can dress like a cowboy willing, now. Like we've got to be willing to sit in the discomfort of that transition, though, because I remember when I switched schools again for like the umpteenth time my eighth grade year, you know, all the girls, all the pretty girls and the popular girls, nonetheless, they're like, oh my God, I'm so ugly and blah, blah, blah. And then, you know, they ask me like, oh, do you think you're pretty? I'm like, well, I don't think I'm ugly. And then all of a sudden the freaking <laughs> comes out, right? Like, <laughs> um, I'm the bad person because I don't, you know, publicly hate myself, you know, and it's just like, damned if you do damned if you don't so ultimately it's a discomfort in any direction but doing that crossing the bridge of really being honest with ourselves and taking full ownership and responsibility of ourselves that is a level of discomfort a lot of people avoid like the plague hence why i do what i do I know myself, I tend to be introverted by nature. Like, you know, as a child, I was an introvert. I'd, you know, rather play with, you know, Legos or Matchbox cars by myself. You know, I don't need anybody. And played with myself. Yeah. It's like, you know, it's like I'd rather build a Lego freaking fortress than uh, 
then go out and play with my friends. And as I got older, I kind of broke out of that shell. But I think by nature, I'm not the one to stand out in the crowd. And now I almost think it's a challenge for me. And it's almost that uh, dopamine hit probably that, that I'm getting out of standing out in the crowd and, and going on live. And it, it almost like it's like a, a challenge to myself every time I go live, every time I go speak in public, every time I do this stuff. Normally, that wouldn't be me. I'd be happy, like, chilling in the corner and relaxing. But now, it's like, I don't know, you just, like, overcome. Like, it, like I said, it's really that challenge. Well, it's, I think. It's, it's bigger than you. <laughs> yeah. And you've tapped into that, that it's way bigger than you. You know, I think that's the most interesting thing I, I, I see is how many of us who show up consistently, who shine brightly for the purpose of guiding and, and serving others, we're not super outgoing, crazy extroverted people, but get us in a room with the opportunity to intimately connect with high vibe, like-minded people. And all those introverts turn into extroverts because they're around the people that actually recharge them mm. rather than drain them. Yeah, that's it's very the true. I say it all the time. The, yeah. the, the battery charge. I'm like, most people are an ambivert. I'm like, you're only an introvert because you're around dumbass motherfuckers. Yeah. So take a it's step true. back. It's true. It's true. You know, when, when they pull the and energy out of you, you tend to, right, yes, you tend to insulate around. when they're stealing your energy. You throw that insulation in there, you know? It's, well, yeah, boundaries, right? right? Like, yeah, boundaries, so we start yeah. to eliminate some of those toxic relationships, some of those emotional and energy vampires who yeah. like to feed on people who are just beacons of light the way a lot of the people in our respective ecosystems are, right? Like we're just born to shine in the way that we do for the purpose of, you know, our, our greater purpose, our divine purpose, you know, yeah. to be of highest service it's, in that way. It's so funny because, you know, since I started doing this almost two years ago, there's so few people like that now in my life that I never even worry about it. I just don't come yeah. into contact with them. Like, it, it's it's not even a it's not even an afterthought. I forget that whole side of the world exists because nobody I'm around uh, projects that kind of energy. And I know that sounds weird to say, but like. I literally had forgotten about it until you mentioned it. And like, I'm just not around any toxic people ever. I, mm -hmm. I they just, it's wonderful. Yeah. You know? and I, Isn't it the most amazing thing? And I said that, that attraction that we have now, we, we're, we just attract more and more like energy people as we start building, you know, we start growing in ourselves and you know, literally just people just show up in my life that are like randomly just like, boom, all of a sudden we start talking. I'm like, well, you're awesome. Like we got to connect like, you know, um, I also find I, a lot of people are showing up in my life that are struggling with stuff and whatever it's a higher power sending my way or whatever. But um, we start talking and they're they're they got stuff going on, heavy stuff going on in their life. And honestly, I'm kind of helping them get through it. Like you know, I I feel you know like you know I don't know how we met and then I don't know why we met, but all of a sudden. You know, and I hear it's funny. I, I hear it in their voice. I'm like, "You all right?" This thing, and I, I like to say, you know, sometimes you're just like, "Are you okay?" And like, no, honestly, I'm not. I got this going on. I got that going on. And I'm like, all right, all right. So let's let's work through this. Like, let's step by step. Let's work through this. Like, because I can hear it in your voice. I can hear the pain that you're carrying. And I have a lot of stirred, I guess, from my messages in the morning. A lot of people DM me and we have side conversations. And it's, I don't know, it kind of gives me chills. It's kind of like how these people just randomly show up in my life and um, and then they're struggling. And, um, and you know what? They don't realize, you know, each one of us have had struggles in the background. We they see us on, you know, on these shows and standing out there in cowboy gear and they think life is perfect. But then, uh, you know, we've all been through a lot of crap and we all have crap going on in the background. It's just life. So you think you're alone on this island with your own load of crap. But realistically, we all, we're all got an island full of crap that we're sorting through and making better. What is Sam peeing on us? No. <laughs> <laughs> I it did sound like pee, didn't it? No, it, it did, was yeah. my fridge. I was getting more water. That did sound <laughs> like, like, say about like pee. pee. It totally <laughs> I was filling it up, I started listening to it. I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Should have hit mute on that one, my yeah. man. My bad. I was just, no, I was filling That's my water. Cool. Man's got to pee. You got to pee, you know? Oh, good. <laughs> Go I, would mute, I, would mutual, I would mutual if I peed, all right? <laughs> so, so are we going to our Universal on Sunday or what? Um, you know, logistically, we ended up deciding we're going to do, um, 
we're going to do Dave and Buster's again, mm -hmm. just because there's so many people who want to join, but are still flying out on Sunday. Mm -hmm. So beach. it keeps us the closer nice. to the airport. Yeah. So, beach day. No, beach um, day. it's really cool. I mean, I know it's like sh beach weather for you up there in the, you know, 20 <laughs> degrees and everything, degrees, yeah. but like, it's pretty flipping cold right now. I What's mean, cold to it you was there? like 80 the other day, but still. <laughs> <laughs> um, 80s cold <laughs> the water the water is in the 60s that's, yeah I don't get in there yeah I'm actually flying out um, Monday afternoon I actually decided let's put the time in so we can perfect. hang out Sunday. so Thursday afternoon yeah, Monday yeah afternoon. we're yeah. gonna do like I said I think we'll, we'll do Dave and Buster's that way it's just closer another we'll just round do, of uh, dance, I mean, dance granted, revolution granted yeah. if yes round two and now that i know how to set it up properly <laughs> yeah <laughs> that was funny i don't know if you guys saw, I don't know if you saw the it video so sam funny. it was uh yeah, me and her oh, doing yeah. uh, him and I, yeah. two tall ass lanky people We're trying to figure out Dance Dance Revolution. Revolution. <laughs> it was funny. We were laughing our asses off. <laughs> such a good time. If you're not that's having so fun, funny. what's the point? You got to be silly in life. I said it all the time. Oh man, but that's but that's like the magic of like all of my events is is doing that balance. You know, we can do the learn stuff, but at the same time, we've got to have the experiences and we've got to have the play. You know, we've got to we be laughed, we cried, a bunch of us cried at that event, a bunch of us laughed at that event, a bunch of us, you know, learned a lot about each other at that event. It really was mm -hmm. a, it's not, not your average networking event. <laughs> no, I was going to say you, you, since you've attended um, my events, I would love for you to share what, what makes it different? Because obviously we're in all of these respective overlapping groups right we're in these different networks we're in these different masterminds we all go to events all the time right and it's easy to kind of get sucked in like oh whatever you know it's what it's what to prioritize in my calendar yeah, why <clears throat> why come to an influential event it's um i wouldn't call it an event i call it an experience it is really it's an experience yeah. yeah so it's not an event it's experience it's uh we, you know everything we talk about here the energy um the people that are attracted to that room i mean literally we're all the same people like literally like you just instantly connect i met mariana for the first time in that room and we became like best friends like uh there's a bunch of people that you know like it's just i don't know just are like-minded people get attracted to this room and now you're in a room and now you're sharing i mean deep we got deep i mean a lot of us said a lot of us shed tears in that room and um and there's no judgment, there's no nothing, and everyone's like, listen, I'm there too, I'm here for you, whatever you need, like, you know, here's a hug, like, type thing, um, it's really, uh, I don't want to say it's like going to church, but it's kind of like going to church in a way, you know, it's, it's, a, it's not just, it like, is a spiritual experience, it's a spiritual experience, you know, it's, um, it's not like, you know, Apex, we go and we talk about business, business and stuff like that, and that's, that's, you know, that's, it's got its thing, you know, about, you know, building our businesses and building our brands and, you know, social media and marketing and all of this stuff. And, and obviously Stacy's got a background in that, but, um, her, uh, her events are more, like I said, more of a spiritual event, more of a mind set event, more of a mind hack event. Um, you it know. is. Yeah. A hack. Yeah. <laughs> That's why know. I say people like, what do you do? I'm like, I specialize in mind fuckery. Yeah. It's true. But... <laughs> you know, the, looking into each other's eyes and, and that exercise was, uh, definitely pretty wild. Um, yeah, there, there was well, some, it's... it's definitely, it gets you out of your comfort zone. Makes you think a lot, you know, not a little. Makes you think a lot. Um, it just really opens yourself up. Um, you know, it's just a whole new experience. It's um, like nothing I've ever been to before. And then the people just make it. It literally, you know, we left there and I'm like family with a bunch of people there that I'd never met before. You know, and it's it's you know, again, the like-minded people kind of gravitate. But it helps you access emotional availability very quickly. Mm. You know, people are like, well, what makes it different? You know, because there's lots of people who do leadership. There's lots of people who do mindset. Right. Because I mean, it's a very broad umbrella. Yeah. And so, you know, I like to say, you know what, this is high performance inner work because I work with all these people that are just like us. And to be honest, we want results yesterday. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. yeah. We truly. Want, we want a shortcut. Yep. Yeah. Yes. We want the hacks. We want the shortcuts. We want to do it quickly. Yet at the same time, learning how to slow down mm. in order to speed up. Yep. You know, people are always wondering, ultimately, like, what is the hack for all of these massively performing people? 
you know, and that's why I put out in one of the posts, I was like, you know, if you want to know the high performance secret that people like Elon Musk and Sir Richard Branson are using, come to our event. Mm. You'll get to experience it. We'll have it there. Activating flow states, basically activating non-ordinary states. Some people do it with microdosing mushrooms. Some people do it with, um, you know, you can do the electrodes and all of that stuff. Like you can meditate for hours or you can do the shortcut Ooh. hack we're going to do at the event. You know, if you're like, I'm done with freaking decision fatigue. I don't know about you running multiple businesses Ooh. right now and going from a team of just moi to now eight people over uh, practically overnight, multiple businesses. And at, now I'm doing events right? like in my next book, I, just all the shit I'm doing that requires a lot. It's easy to get into that place of just decision fatigue. I mean, literally today, planning the final menu for the event, I was oh, like, oh, oh somebody much. just decide this. I'm so over it, right? Like, but no, 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 no. I want to make sure I choose things I will eat, so it was fine. But I hit that moment. I'm like, oh, God, when this is feeling hard, I know I'm hitting a bit of decision fatigue. Guess what? I'll show you the hack, the shortcut to boop, get a decision in a way that you can trust 100% of the time and it will never steer you wrong and get an answer instantly. Like this is the experiences. This is the, these are the lessons, the high performance hacks, the emotional release technique that is my, my absolute favorite that everybody in my ecosystem does. Patrick, our body worker, mm. he's gonna teach you how to get into your body quickly, lower your central, central nervous system because guess what? When we're overstimulated, those ADD, ADHD symptoms become more intense, AKA inability to focus. Mm. If you lower your nervous system and get down into your body, man, whew, productivity skyrockets. Yeah. We're going to be talking about how to effectively communicate with your teams yeah. or relation, other important relationships. You know, there's all of these different things. Forgiveness. God, talk about a, bag yeah. a big old bur burden yeah. that slows us down and so it's doing this high performance by going right to the boop, pluck the root and then the weed is gone now granted new level same devil there's gonna it'll show up again in, in the future but this is about shortening the sabotage cycle so we're just like bam you become sabotage proof over time because the ebbs and flows become so subtle it has no effect on your results, mm. right? And so every time we hit one of those invisible ceilings on our level of freedom, hello, everyone who says, I don't have time. Mm. The choice. The fulfillment. Every time we're craving this concept of more, and the reason I bring this up is how many of you feel like you're not doing enough? <laughs> we are chasing the fucking dragon of fulfillment. Yeah. If we're overwhelmed. sitting in the space, if we're sitting in the space of I'm busting my ass, I'm burned out, I am maxed out. On Recording in progress. Do I keep to scaling? You know, is there a cutoff point? And it just—it's the dream, it's the chase, it's that—that uh, that never enough. There he is. Yeah, freaking. Welcome nice. back, Brian. Modern technology, first world problems. Uh, yeah. nope. Isn't that wonderful? I love yeah. when he's on mute. It's yeah. so peaceful. Without... Oh, there yeah. he is. Yeah, yeah. First world problems, right, modern right. technology. Well, we're not streaming, but we can finish the interview here, and then we can patch it together and publish the video. I'm saying it's it, still showing live. Are you, uh, is it streaming? Is it? You, well, now that you're back on. Well, it will be now you're on. Did you, did you drop, yeah. did you drop internet or did you just drop Zoom? You no, know, my computer decided to reboot. You gotta love that. Oh, no, it won't be streaming no more, mate. It's but streaming it's live. Hold on, let's see what we got. But do you see our faces? Maybe. Let's yeah, see. yeah, you're still good. Kind of back on again. I, I don't know, we'll see. Yay! Maybe. Maybe. There you go. All right, I'll touch, I'll touch my forehead. Am I touching my forehead? 
on Facebook. I don't see, there's a lag. So hold on. I know it's like 15 seconds. All right, that's enough touching. You, you'll see it here in a minute. <laughs> oh, yeah. yep, there you go. We're there on. We're still good. Yes, we're all good. All right, we're yes. yeah. all right. That's we're enough forehead touching, man. <laughs> okay. I love it. That's all right. So funny. Jesus. So right. yeah, you know what I was saying about chasing the dragon of fulfillment, right? Never doing enough. And you were saying, right? You're constantly doing that with the scale. Oh, but yeah, I I figure it's just part and parcel of scaling a company, though. Um, at, at but we can, point. I I feel like a lot of these are justifiable myths. Like it's just mm. the program. You know what I mean? It's the, the story we've been told about what success is, what the experience needs to be. And I, set, also I set my expectations for what I wanted for my company when I set my goals mm -hmm. and when I hit those goals, I don't really intend to go past them with these businesses. I want to set my businesses up, get them to a point where they're running and happy and operating all nice and neat. And then I want to go and pursue other things. Like I Absolutely. don't want to, I don't want to grow smart. billion dollar companies. I'd like to grow like effective nonprofits and start charities and things, you know? So yeah. um, that's what I'm working on my companies right now is, is growing them to the point where I can, I can, Pull away the freedom right and so i think oh no i mean yeah. that is so smart and so wise and it's part of that greater vision that that much larger purpose and impact you're called to make what i'm referring to is the journey along the way still feeling like we're not not doing enough not mm. being enough not working hard enough yeah, I've always struggled and, with that. And, like, and ma maxing ourselves out inadvertently, making the journey harder than it needs to be. Maybe the that's true. The experience yeah. of it. The experience of it. Yeah, but Not like I, I come alive on the edge. I mm. putting stuff together, man. I love it. I love the chase. That's good. But yeah. I mean, like at a certain point, like I know I've in the past, I've been to the point where like, you know, I'll stay up to two, three in the morning because I'm trying to keep getting tests done, getting tests done. And it's hard to say, you know what, this can wait till tomorrow. I need to go to sleep. Like, you know what I mean? Like, because we're overwhelmed. Man, it's with, a never ending you know, list, mate. Yeah. Like, you it's know, never, that, the, the bigger you grow your business, the more things that will add to that list. Yeah. So you have to understand that to grow it any more than you possibly can, you have to hire people. Exactly. You're going to keep exactly. adding tasks to the list. The tasks you add to your list are going to get more and more complex. So you give the less complex tasks off that list. Exactly. Just yeah. how it works. But sometimes you build I mean, a bigger plate. Yeah, it's but sometimes we just kind of know that, you know what, if I just work another hour, I'll get this done. I work another half hour, I'll get this done. You'll never get to the bottom of the list. And But like I said, learning to say, hey, you know what, this really doesn't have to happen today. I can do this tomorrow. Let's go get some sleep, you know, and then... And that was always a problem for me. Like, I, you know, that's obviously all stuff I learned. I've actually learned as I've calmed down and, and backed away and let stuff, you know what, if it doesn't get done today and it's not, I have a deadline, we'll do it tomorrow. And yeah, it's part of that's procrastination, I find. So there's a, there's a fine line between procrastination and can it really get done tomorrow? Productivity. But, productivity, yeah. But um, I mean, like, I know I go on vacation and like, what do I do on vacation? I wax my car because, you know, it's, I get an hour to like, you know, it's like, what are you doing? Like, like, I don't know how to relax. Like, you know, they're always like, mm -hmm. you know, I got to wax the car and, you know, I'm working all week. So now we're on vacation. I got, I got a couple hours here. Let's go wax the cars. Like, so what do you do for fun? I wax my car. Like, you know, it's, you know, it's like, you know, it's crazy, you know, like sit there in a chair and like, you know, do nothing or I can get some stuff done, you know? Um, and that's a good problem that we all, it, it can still, yeah. I mean, you can still be in a place of, of being in a state of action while being fully, immersed in what you're doing you can be fully fully present yeah. and not checked out with work still like you can disconnect from work doing other stuff right it's finding that flow so kind of the sam what you were saying right like really enjoying the chase like living on that edge so there's that fine line between getting into that place of that really beautiful focus and flow where you're really optimized and like firing on all cylinders that's where i like to be Yes, right? Like that's that beautiful focus. You're actually yep. in that optimized flow state. And what's cool is you're actually able to like 
expand the experience of time and get so much more done in less time. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and so like, that's the new dragon for me that I'm choosing is like, okay, how can I elevate my performance? and get way more done in less time and experience this fun and this ease, remove the pressure. Cause you can be in that focus and flow without it feeling hard or having that uh, pressure. Look, I love nothing more and I have no more fun than when I'm so focused one minute it's nine o'clock and next to my calendar is beeping to tell me to go pick William up at lunchtime. Yeah. Like, I love that. And my day just, yeah, well, it, it's like, that flow, I'm having, yeah. I'm having, having fun the whole day. Yeah. Um, you're playing, you're playing at the amusement park. I almost like to say, it's yeah. like, almost like, uh, you know, sort of like, uh, the train is running out there on the tracks and you got to jump on it and get, get, get in moving. You, you know, at certain points you're standing there and, you know, you're, you're trying to get on the train, you're trying to get on the train, you're procrastinating, you're procrastinating. And once you jump on that train, you start sailing and you're, you're going past and, right. you know, it's like. i tell you how I see it. Like. It's like playing video game levels. Like, if you want to play the level with the fast cars, you've got to do the level with the education. Mm. You know, <laughs> like yeah. like that. If you want to play the level with the the nice girls, you've got to play the level with the gym and the diet in it. You know. Yeah. So you, <laughs> you've got to play the levels before you can get to the the level with the private jets and the residual income. You know, yeah, yeah. there's there's so, so by doing each level, it's like if I complete this mission, then the next mission is this. And it, it's right. There's like a boss at the end of every single one, too. Yeah, like, definitely. It might be in a simulation, fellas. <laughs> um, I mean, as crazy as it sounds, I almost are feel we like in the Matrix now? There is a flow out there, right? That that I feel, like, yeah. Or, or vibration of play, the universe, if, right? Dude, we all if you kind play of the together. education level, yeah. if you play the fitness level, if you play the diet level, or you could like go and have some fun and play the drinking level and the promiscuity level and see how those work out for you. It's which game am I going to play today? Yeah, Where am I going to sure. take my avatar and what am I going to do? And the, the the key to success has been laid out so many times. Yeah. It's not a secret. You just have to decide that that's the level I'm going to play today. And you, and you that's what I'm going to do. Get on board the flow train. I mean, it's almost like like literally like I feel like there's this flow train that you've literally got to jump on board. You know, um, mm -hmm. you know, when I reached out to you today and we started talking, you were like, I was thinking about doing this, like, and then like we just connected because I feel like we're all mentally we're on the same wavelength that we just our ideas connect like totally mm -hmm. randomly florida new york like reached out to her and she was like i was just thinking the same thing you just contacted me for how'd that work and it happens I just, with a lot I just of people got my in my new world shirts today see effortless is my standard i love it love it <laughs> i like that effortless. i like it i like it it's like everybody gets to look at my boobs when you get on that uh that flow train you know it's like can, can we see that shirt again <laughs> Touche, my man. Touche. <laughs> you said it. All right, enough. <laughs> but I mean, but that's it, right? Like, is is we have the opportunity to choose what level we're playing today, right? Mm -hmm. And how many times do we go back to the beginning and play the small beginner level shit? Oh, yeah. yeah. Right? That's, you know, here we are living the higher level life, but every time we're having that challenge, <laughs> getting to the next level is, oh, wait, new level, same devil, right? Oh, I, I, your, your tiny little <laughs> Mario brother is sitting there, just can't fucking do shit. Yeah. Mine keeps getting stuck on the weed and sex level, and we'll go past it. <laughs> 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 All right, cover your ears. That's enough of that. That's so funny. <laughs> Yesterday, yeah. my husband, I'm so proud of him. He went to a new level and bought a new motorcycle. Oh, he sweet. had his motorcycle for the last seven years. He bought it brand new. He's like, yep, it's time. Time for the new level. So he's like, it was like breaking up with a girlfriend and trading it in for a new mistress. I was like, yeah, they do get way more time in your crotch than I do. <laughs> I think I think I I think I gave my dad the mental breakthrough that he needed today to go buy a Harley Davidson. He has been talking about it for like thirty years, and he was talking to me today. And I said, Dad, how long have you been talking about getting one of these fucking bikes? He says, Oh, probably thirty years. 
I said, look, you've not got long left, mate. What's the worst that can happen if you buy it? Is it going to depreciate? Well, no. All right. All right. Are you going to ride around on it for six months and have the biggest shit eating grin on your face? Yeah. All right. So what's the downside? And finally, finally he admitted that, you know what? There really isn't any downside to this whatsoever. And uh, I think he's going to go pull the trigger on one. I'd be very That's pleased fantastic. if he does. He kept making That's obstacles to why he wouldn't do it. I'm like, Dad, there's no obstacle. Just get it. Yes. Like He's worked his entire mm. life. You see that a lot. But of I mean, our... isn't that it? Yeah. Right? We create our own obstacles all the time. And all mm -hmm. it takes is someone else to be the look at the forest for you because we get so stuck in the trees. Mm -hmm. It's not going to depreciate. Mm -hmm. you know? well, that's he doesn't a... need to worry. We just need to worry about paying too much for it. I told him even if it depreciates five thousand pounds over two years, that means it's costing ten pounds a week or something like that. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, because it's worth that, no, that much for fun. Yeah, I think that's yeah. a that's an old school mentality though, of saving for that rainy day. And uh, oh, that's how he, that's know. how that yeah, that's how he, he does. Yeah, and it's I guess all saving. They've been through bad times yeah. and they had bad times yeah. in their lives, so that when they no, had they those were, bad times. My parents were post World War Two babies, so they were born both born in fifty four, which was nine years after the end of the war when England was still under ration and all that other stuff. It was still very bad. And so they grew up like poor. Um make and reuse everything and so yep, yeah, it's, yep. it's so you're always saving like to spend for that rainy day, mm -hmm. you know, and then uh, we talk yeah. about that, right? About our, our our mindset about that. Are we accepting of of wealth and whatnot because we're so used to, you know, Scarcity mindset, I guess you call it, right? So scarcity, we all have the scarcity yeah. mindset and we don't, we don't think that we well, deserve better because like, you know, it's like, yeah. you know, I have the money to do this and why not? But you don't feel like you deserve it almost like, cause like, like I might need this money for something else later. And uh, my mm -hmm. grandfather passed away. We thought he was poor his whole life and he, you know, worth well over a million dollars. And I'm like, this guy like didn't buy a new car and towards the end he bought a new car, but I'm like, he always had old junk cars and you know, the house was always kind of plain Jane. You know, they never really did much. And turns out when we start putting his finances in order as he was getting, you know, near the end, and the guy's worth like a million and a half. And I'm like, go out buy a car. Like what are you doing? Like, you know, like live your life, you know, and but you know what? He wanted to leave it to to the kids and and that that's that's important. You know, listen, we want our kids to do better than us. But at the same time you know, don't live poor, but he was happy. So, you know, but again, that's that mindset, that old school, like I'd rather have it in the bank than go buy the Harley because I might need it for that rainy day. Mm -hmm. And then we got us that go lease a Lambo and because why not, you know? <laughs> not me, pal. I'm going to no. buy mine. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, it, I'll, it, I'll it's, it's, it. it's just being mindful of where that not enough is showing up, right? Yeah. That's That scarcity can be very subtle. Because again, going back to the, oh, you know, I've got all this success, all the stuff's happening, I'm getting what I want, but I don't feel like I'm doing enough, right? Am I good enough where the you're deserving of everything that I've created? Especially if we don't come from that. Mm, that's a good one. Mm -hmm. I struggle with that. Like, I've, I've had a few runs of bad luck um, in business. I, I was doing I was doing great until I, w I wasn't and then uh, my first year out of real estate I invested everything in a commercial development that I got lucky enough to be a part of and the commercial development went under and then we got back on our feet and got going again and uh, we had about 300,000 on the books when COVID hit and <laughs> wiped that out and so it's only in the last real year that I've started to become like really in the right place financially and um look at the lessons you learn though in that process still, which is um really I, very yeah, valuable like i've got the i've got the i've got the best fundamentals of that like yeah. we've got leads we've got employee i mean it's it's great like and yet i'm still afraid to spend money like i'm gonna fail i'm like i better hold some of this you know it's it's just like i i still even after all that underlying foundational work that we've done and i've never had a business this strong um i'm yeah. still still worried you need the flow you need, need to come to tampa i get the flow i can't get to tampa i've got shit to do uh, <laughs> fye i told you no i told you i'd come if i could yeah. i've i've taken i've got i've got the problems that every entrepreneur wants 
I've got more clients than I can than I can handle, and I'm working on putting the systems and processes in place to keep this number of clients whilst properly fulfilling all the services that we're offering. And then we'll add some more clients. So we're in this bit of the scale. Right? It's, mm -hmm. it's fucking great. I've got every problem you ever wished for, and I'm just managing them very methodically and, and keeping chugging along. It, it, it's wonderful. I struggle That's to awesome. believe it's working. You know, so I, I don't know. I'm still afraid. The it's finance okay. side, I mean, for me, I was, I um, I think it was up to like 37 doors at one point, uh, rental properties, and the economy tanked in the late 2000s. And, uh, you know, I'd rent them and I'd evict them, and the mortgage was still there, and basically lost my shirt. You know, every any money I had saved, I put back into the properties, keep the mortgages going, short sale stuff. I mean, just trying to. You know, tread water, keep my head Airbnb above. Airbnb wasn't you know. a thing then, no. It wasn't a thing then. Um, I had uh -uh. a bunch. I had a trail, a trail park in North Carolina. <laughs> I had, you know, five families, two families, single families. You name it, I had it. Commercial buildings. And um, everything was great. And then it wasn't. And yeah. I was over leveraged. And basically it all crashed and burned. And That's how you learn though, isn't it? Oh, yeah. That's no, I can learn, tell you man. how to do it now. Um Mm -hmm. and I learned a process, lot about leverage. Yeah, I don't. What, you know. what do they say? Three things of fucker, man, mate: liquor, ladies, and leverage. Hmm. I've never uh, heard that I, before, I can, but I like that. Yeah. I can attest. I can attest. Yeah, they've done all three. Yeah, yeah. So yep. uh, from that point, um, I was very concerned with money. Very concerned with what got spent uh, to the point where, um, looking back with with the wife, you know, obviously separated from the wife and some of the issues we've had were basically me harping over money like literally nickel and diamond her over money because do we really need that do we really need that because i'm trying to recover i'm trying to build up the nest egg again i'm trying to get caught up because i had this dream that i was going to retire at 40 you know not so much retire but not have to you know be free at 40 i should say you know where i could just go maybe uh you know have the rental properties paying the bills and then go out and flip a house and whatever for for the fun money and I was on that track until I wasn't. And then kind of really knocked the wind out of me, knocked the knees out from under me. And from that point on, I really got so overwhelmed with spending money that I got watched everything. And I think it was a lot of a lot of the turmoil, you know, a lot of things, but some of the turmoil in my relationship was the harping over money all the time. And now I've gotten to the point now where, honestly, I don't even look at what it costs and I just do it. And for some reason, the money just keeps showing up. And that's the flow state that I think we we're talking about when, I mean, with, within reason, you know, but, but like, you know, should I join Apex and go spend a thousand dollars a month? You know, like, okay, should I, you know, pay for Stacy's event, jump on a plane and go spend, you know, a bunch of days in Tampa? You no, know I just do it now. I don't think about what it costs because I know I need to be there. And I know that's you know part why? of what's happening in my life. That, that pull is, I need to be here. I don't care what it costs, you know. It's because you'll always find a way to pay for your priorities, mate. It's true. it's true. It's true. Yeah. You can always find a way if it's a big enough priority. I mean, the 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 go to for the psychology major on that is, you know, if you've got a sick kid, could you find ten thousand dollars by tomorrow? Yeah. Of course you could. Yeah. Yeah. Of course you yeah. could. Yeah. Your spouse so, is gonna die, and you've yeah. gotta come up mm -hmm. with the money to. <laughs> it's just it's almost take like take care of them. You know, it's almost like so what Stacy had said last time. It's the the more I spend, the more I make. You know, so. Uh, mm -hmm. The, yeah. more, the more sex I have, well, the more money I make. That was the last time. <laughs> yes, that yes, is true. Yes. Well, and it, and it is, it's being a mindful of, you know, really being digging to the root of where that when's the shoe going to drop belief comes from. Mm. Because a lot of that stuff plays out. And, you know, we still have that stored trauma in our body. Right. We can do, we can create all the evidence to the contrary all day long. But if we don't release that stored trauma from our body, our physical body, our emotional body, our energy body, it's going to creep up and mm -hmm. like cause some of that sabotage, cause some of that doubt, cause some of that hesitation okay. for maybe some of those really amazing opportunities. That, that self doubt is really, really a thing for me, and I think for a lot of people. You know that, that limited mindset that when's it going to crash and burn? You know, like the real estate world. You know, I'm like, all right, so I did the best year in real estate I ever did. You know, every year I'm basically, you know, probably doubling what I did the year before, um, and it's just coming naturally. It's 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 in flow. You know, the team's working out great. They're getting in flow. I'm changing their lives in the process. You know, we're all kind of building this thing together, 
and I'm constantly watching the rates go up, and I go, when, this is too good to be true. When's the bottom going to fall out? You know, when are the bad times going to come? When are the bad real estate times going to come? And you know, and then you kind of like start second guessing yourself, and then you start backing away from it a little bit, and rather than running at it, going, this is working. Let's keep going where this is working. You kind of, you know, that doubt level comes in. You start coming off your game. You start getting out of flow. Um, you got to run the score up, man. Just, just run the score up. That's, 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 the whistle that, blows. that's what's happened. Yeah, no, that, that's, just that's it. Winning. Just stop looking win back next, and just, just, just keep win winning. You know? well, the well, the here's play. the thing. The more that you commit to living and leading and serving from that place of true alignment and purpose, you become sabotage proof internally and externally your brand in your business and your team will be so strong that it won't matter what those things are happening out there covid happened and i 5 x my business yeah that's all, all my I clients was. pulled all their contracts but like real estate blew up because that's where mm -hmm. we focused we we had yeah. a choice we could we could either make it work or we could go home and right. everybody chose to stay and make it work you know yeah. it's, it's not crazy it's check out this text i just got so this is ed and my team he's not watching doesn't realize i'm doing this right now i just wanted to acknowledge the effort you're putting in lately to the team the leads and suggestions are very helpful um i like to say thank you for the lead generation bro and take care i can't wait for the meeting tomorrow night like this mm -hmm. is like how much you paying for that like it's just this is my world now. Like, you know, um, so good. it's, I don't know. So and that, that just randomly just showed up while we're sitting here talking about it. I mean, that's just, Aww. it's just crazy. Like, um, I don't know. And that's, that's what feeds me honestly at this point. I'm like, all right, I got to do better for them. You know, yeah. cause you know, I'm helping them grow and I'm changing their lives in the process, you know? Um, you know, it helps me in the process, but, uh, it's, it's fun to change lives. It really is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah Gates it is. Up there. Gates I mean, said he quadrupled so, his business during the pandemic. Yeah. All See, right. I, 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 I five X from 2020 to 2021, I five X and or, I'm sorry, strike that from 2019 into 2020, 2020, I five X my, my income. And then from 2020 to 2021, I did, did it again. That's yeah. a lot of fives. Yeah. That's a lot of a fives. Lot of fives. Yeah. I don't know how many X's it is, but I definitely made more money than I've ever made my whole life last year. So. <laughs> All right. Nice. Yeah. So if you want to do that and get influential, Stacy, before we get out of here, give everybody your event details one more time. Yeah, Just run back absolutely. over that and tell them how they can get it. Oh, yeah. So uh, we got this oh, special the special hit for everyone that stuck with us to the end here. I know. Gabe and right? Nicole Stallone here. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. He's the Stacy special. So for those of you, like I said, just because Brian last minute reached out, he's like, come on. Let's get some more people in at your event. More people need to experience this. Yes. Absolutely amazing it is. So I was like, all right, let's open up 10 more seats. So there's only 10. That is it in the next 24 hours. You have 24 hours to go to VIPstacy.com slash impact. I literally just turned the funnel back on. Yep. <laughs> just to, this easy. Just hit the hit the button. Yep. <laughs> One, make it that effortless. Yeah, that was easy. <laughs> so I just turned it back on VIPstacy.com slash impact. We have 10 more seats left that are, that are just here, just for 24 hours. If we don't sell out the 10, it doesn't matter. 24 hours, that's it. It's gone. So it's a special but opportunity. here's the difference. Yeah, right. Select opportunity. Mm -hmm. But here's the thing, right? In the stool of success, there are three legs. The be, the do, mm -hmm. the have. We got to be the leader who does the actions to have the impact in the world we desire. We've got to work on all three of those pillars. But every time we have a stuck point, every time we are having that plateau, that invisible ceiling, something's not truly feeling that place of ease, effortlessness, flow, freedom, fulfillment, we've always got to check back into the pillar that is the B. Right. So some of us are in, I mean, all three of us are, are in Apex. Apex is amazing. I love it. It's the doing space, right? Mm. That's the doing leg of this yes. stool. Mm -hmm. And ours is that complement to that as that being space. Yes. So it's that high performance leadership. We support the physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual body at the same time. We'll, we'll do all these high performance hacks 
all these uh, tips, techniques, tools, these experiences you will have over the two days that you can take with you to massively scale who you are being as a leader to create the resulting scale of the ROI, the impact, and the freedom and fulfillment you desire. And I can yeah. attest to that because I experienced it firsthand last time. And uh, it was, uh, it's definitely, I mean, it's perfect. I, I like how you're saying it. It's a, it's a total complement to Apex. It's, it's different, but it, it complements it. They go hand in hand. Um, you know, then Stacy's not going to teach you how to, you know, promote social media and all that stuff. Although I'm sure she can. That's not her goal. Her goal is to get our heads right to the point where we attract the people naturally in our social media rather than actually how to actually do social media. Apex will teach you how to do social media. Stacy will get your head right so that your your attraction will will pull the people towards you. Yeah, and we've got to have both. We need both. We yeah. have to be in that place of alignment and attraction and then follow it with the actions that yeah. support the inspiration and and all of that beautiful purpose and shine and everything that we're here to do. We got to do both, you know. Get on the flow train. <laughs> I love it. All right. I'm going to go get on the cook some dinner train <laughs> and then I got to go work that. out. Yeah. So. Nice. I ran today. <laughs> I did 10 miles. Brian rode his bike. Yeah. Oh, swag, by the way. Come get a shirt. Come get a nice bougie mug from oh, like Tumblr. It. Tumblr. Go get the Tumblr. Swag. All right, guys. Swag. <laughs> Thank you guys for having me on. I always love our conversations. This was like, awesome. We're as not always. talking business. We just no, talk random stuff. This is life, you know? This is every, you know, a lot of shows talk Keep about fulfilling. all business that, business that. We just got to have fun and mm -hmm. be real, be vulnerable, right? That's what we talk about. Keep it real. Yeah. Okay. All right. Stacy, right, so. thank you. Guys, don't You're forget so to go welcome. check out Stacy's event. Yeah. Get down there if you can. If I could Thanks, be there, Stacy, I would, my dear. I would. All right. Thanks, I'm going to leave you all. All right, everyone. Have a wonderful evening, guys. Have a great night. Bye. See you soon, Brian.